Hey guys, it's Trisha, the left-handed stitcher. I've decided to try doing a kit up video. I'm going to kit up the Angel Eyes project that I just did an unboxing on the other, uh, like a day or two ago. All right, so these are my f my favorite. Um, containers. I got these off of Amazon. They're just little other squares. Like so. Um, when you squeeze the side, the lid releases. I've been using these for months now and so far they they haven't they have not given me any problems. So these are the ones that I I like to use. They tend they they hold quite a bit, you know, they come in their own little plastic case. You know, I've tried I've tried the ones that are, you know, linked together, the little four-pieced ones. I've tried the screw top ones. The screw top ones I do okay with. Um, those, you know, I still use them. But I've purchased quite a few of these containers. So I I don't expect to need to use anything but these for a while. So, um, I managed to get a, a scan this off of the canvas um, to use to put, you know, to mark. And I have I have a second sheet. So even though I'm going to cut this one up, I still have this one for reference. And this is basically the same thing that I do um, with my cross stitch. When I, you know, kit up a cross stitch pattern, it's very, very close to this same process. So I don't, I don't have. I don't have a Xyron. Well, yeah, I actually do have a Xyron, but um, I don't. I don't want to use it just yet. Um, I don't think I need it. If as I as I move through more diamond paintings, um, I have I have some glasses in here. So I can do some of this more delicate work. Um, I might decide that I want to use use the Xyron, but I can do without it. All right. So what I do is I, you know what? I could probably even cut closer to the side of that block that the symbol is in. So then what I do is I just cut right above and right below each one. And so I was, you know, cross stitching today, watching some diamond painting videos. And I kind of got the urge to start on this gorgeous piece. So it's what I think I'm going to do. I may not actually start it tonight, but I will, I'm going to try to get the kit ready for the next time I feel like starting. I've, I've watched several kidding videos that um, Rebecca at 4kids at 147 does and I really enjoy watching those so I decided you know what, I would I'll give it a try I mean I'm 
working on putting together the system that um, she uses for her spare diamonds or spare drills. Um, I run into well, I'm in the still in the process of gathering all of the components. I thought I almost had it um, this weekend, but as it turns out, our photo boxes are smaller than the photo boxes they use in Britain. So mm, the bags that I had ordered and all of the divider cards that I had cut every all of them already per her um, measurements yeah so I figured it would be a lot easier for me to order some of the photo boxes from Hobbycraft and have them shipped to me then go through and cut all several hundred of those divider cards again and write the DMC numbers on them again so we're gonna do that but I'm also I'm gonna I'm gonna work on I think next weekend I will use the photo the my photo boxes that I have US you know small ones um, and the two by three because hers were, hers, her bags were two and a quarter wide. Um, and ours are two inch wide, is what we can get at our, you know, Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to see if I can't come up with a configuration using the U.S. stuff. And we'll see if that, if that's going to work. Okay, so I'm trying to think of how I want to do this. I know that I like. Okay, as you can see, I've cut, I've cut the little square out. I make sure I use, you know, I refer to my my um, other copy to make sure that I haven't, you know, turned it the wrong way. I hold it down with my fingernail so that I can get the piece of tape on it you know in a decent otherwise when you get close to it, it the static likes to suck the little piece of paper up and it gets all you know cattywonky or whatever you want to call it super messed up so alright so there is my symbol for number one now I'm debating, I do think that I want, I want to put the number on the bottom, just in case, in case I, I you, you just never know. Um, down the road if this is going to be helpful, so. We'll just do it now. And as you can see, I take I take these labels, your standard Avery. I use I I, I make sure I get the removable ones, um, just so they're not a real pain in my butt to peel off at the end. Um, and I actually cut them in half because I don't need the whole the whole label for this stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and put my number on the bottom. There's one. Okay, now I use I use my big tray to do this with the spout. It seems to work the best. And before I do, I take a dryer sheet and I just rub it all along the inside. 
I find it does help a little bit with the um, drills and the static on them. Every little bit, every little bit that helps is good. Alright, so I don't know if I want to do this with these. Because normally what I do is I pour I pour the drill packet out and I check to see if there's any rogue diamonds in it. But with the crystals, the way they're flat backed and all that with the silver I think that might be a little more difficult but we'll we'll just try we'll see I'll try this one this way and then I will try number two or number three I'll try number three the other way yeah I'm not gonna be able to tell if there's any wrong ones in there as as the with that much in there when I put a few in there into whatever tray I'm going to use, I should be able to tell then. But let's get let's get you to flow into the container. All right. Wow, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of drills. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be using this tray for um, for these crystals. Maybe it doesn't doesn't quite uh, talk about struggle. What is it struggle bus? Yes, that's what I've been hearing. Um, what's your? Uh, I've just been watching. Mrs. Coffee. So, it always says riding the struggle bus. I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about um, how long this takes. Because kidding takes as long as it takes. And um, I find I. I like it as it's good, some good background um, for when I'm at work or I'm working on a painting. Now, what I like to do as well is I will cut a strip off the dryer sheet. And well, I'll just cut a chunk of it into the container. That um, I find does really help with the drills and their stack. So there's number one. And yep, you can see the drills have some static. The dryer sheet should help. I don't know if these, this is my first time working with crystals. So I don't know if crystals are more prone or not, but we'll find out. I work, I'll work, you know, I work with it. However, I need need to manage. Okay, so this is going to be the catch in case the pour doesn't go well. So number two, I always open it first. Well, I can I can tell. By looking at it to see which is the front, you can just tell that there's the hinge there and there's the little catch. But I've found that I, I do tend to get um, confused, you know, confused if I get distracted. Okay, so here's number two, and that looks like to be the number one and a green background. Um, these days with my eyesight, I am always wearing cheaters whenever I'm crafting. So, cross-stitching, I'm wearing cheaters. Diamond painting, I'm wearing cheaters. 
So I'm I, I'm not using my my glasses right now because um, the cheaters you have to be within book reading distance of the stuff you're working with, and because I'm working you know all over this table, um, I don't want to be wearing them. Now this looks like it may not fit all in this container, so we're going to just see how much how much will. And I have a feeling there's going to be a few of these colors that are like that. So I will just have to... Um, I can use the same baggie that I had, you know, stored them in for storage sake. Okay, I think that's about as much as I want to put in. Um, if it was close, I might, tr you know, try for more in there. But since there's going to be some left, we're just going to call it good for right now. So that was a good pour. Now I do find that when I'm working with these, um, this little, wow, these little dryer sheet pieces can um, rise to the top and, you know, fall out when you try to put drills out. So what I do is if it's near the top when I, before I pour, um, I'm using my scissors because I don't have a drill pen right here. But I'll just take the tip of my drill pen and I'll push it down in. And that that works like that. Okay, so that was number two. Did I put? Nope, I didn't. I need to. This is slightly different than my normal process. Um, because. Some canvases I like using the actual key because the background color of that symbol is helpful. There's other ones where it doesn't seem to be as um, make that much of a difference. So those I will just use these labels. I'll write the numbers on. I will maybe draw a simple symbol and just go with it, but um, this one I decided it would be advantageous to have the color. I want to make sure I'm in camera when I do this part. So what I'm doing is I'm lifting up the tab that has the symbol and then I just get my scissors in there and I cut, you know, eighth of an inch away from that symbol. Now because because I'm left-handed, this will probably be different if you're not left-handed, I have to turn it upside down to get my, you know, to cut. So I'm accustomed to, whenever I have cut, that I turn it, in, you know, 180 before I set it down. So that it is in the right position to be placed upon the container for the drills or on the envelope that I'm putting the floss into. Just part of my part of my usual process. Alright, so I throw my glasses on real quick. I like to look at these symbols to get an idea. This looks like a letter U. See if I can see it better on the canvas. Yep, it's a letter U with a blue background. All right, and let's try to get in the habit of just throwing the number on the bottom. And this one only has a little bit, so this will fit all fit inside of here. Now 
Now, to be honest, I think dumping drills out of one of those plastic um, packets is a little easier. I think the lip on the on the Ziploc baggies kind of messes with the flow a little bit. All right, so number three, let's get you your piece of. Uh, these are nice sharp scissors, but for some reason they are having uh, some trouble with this uh, material. So we'll get out, we'll get out the big guns. I, I love these scissors. These are Tim Holtz. Um, so you ha you know, you'll find them by the Tim Holtz stuff. They are serrated. So they cut through stuff so well. So I, I, I have several pair of, pair of these. They're not, they're not inexpensive. So I always make sure that I grab, um, grab them one of, when I don't have something else I want to use the coupon on. So there's number three. Let's get number four started. I'm trying to think, you know, I'm not much of a chit chat kind of person. A lot of, um, you know, there's sometimes I am, uh, sometimes I'm not. Um, my brain's a little tired because it's already out. Oh. And my clock, I don't think it's right in here. I haven't, I don't work, I have not worked on this desk um, like this for uh, quite a while, so I don't think my. Um, my clock is correct, so no idea. All right, so number four is another bag with a lot in it. So it looks like we're gonna have quite a few of these where I stick them in the spares bag. I mean, these do hold quite a bit, but this is a, a lot, a much larger painting than um, many of the other projects that I have. Um, so. We just will have to adjust as life as I move through, you know, all of the projects, all of the diamond paintings that I have accumulated so far. All right, so number five. Okay, I like these are my paper scissors. They do really well on paper. Um, but. Not for not so much for that stuff. All right, so get my symbol and my tape. All right, so see what what kind of chit chatty stuff might might I. Do while I'm doing this. I mean, let's see with diamond painting. Let's see what kind of chit chat. Um, yeah, that canvas with the sun and the moon. I I, I haven't gotten around to trying to see if I can fix that. All right, so fives on the bottom, symbols on the top. Now this one, I 
I might be able to get it all in there. So I'm still I'm still learning. Wow, am I am I cro crooked? Gosh, sorry about that, guys. I have a mount um, that for my camera that's above my desk, and usually I will check its alignment before I get started, but apparently not so much this time. So, yep, I think we're going to be able to get it all in there. Let's see if I can get those last few without spillage. Good. Good. Alright, so that's one that got. And that's one thing I like about um, the having the camera mounted where it, sorry I bumped the camera while I'm trying to show you when I move the table if I bump my table it's not bumping the camera that's one thing I like about my setup here is that now the camera mount is suspended from a shelving unit that spans across this desk. So there are there's a, shel a wire shelf on either side on either side of this desk and then there's a shelf that spans across between them. And that's where the camera is camera mount has been tethered to. <laughs> okay, so it's a clamp mount. I clamped it to a piece of 1x2 wood, I think it is, and then I zip tied that piece of wood to the, sh t the shelf. So that's my how I managed to get it set up, and it works really well for me. Maybe I should move this in just a little. I suppose it's nice to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, what I needed this for, having this space was enough at, for what I was doing at that time. I'm not sure if it works for this. I might have to redo my setup and move my camera up a little higher so that it can um, get a wider view, but uh, something, something for another day. All right, so number six. Let's get your symbol. And like I said, I have this, I have the hand motion that I just, I can turn it as I'm setting it down. And in, I've been doing that for so many years. It's it's pretty much uh, you know muscle memory at this point. I don't even have to think about it. I just do it. One thing I like about these containers is this nice big top to them. So they're. Um, really easy to label. Alright, so let's get some more of these ready. So zero, 06, zero, 07, zero, 08, zero, 09. And as you can see, I do my sixes and my nines different. I don't know, can you see that? I do my sixes and my nines different. So even if I were to turn it upside down, I could tell that what, that I have it upside down. So, I'm going to do 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you remember there's 25. You know what? Let me just do them all while I'm working on it. Alright, so I have 16, 17, 
18. And I need to grab another sheet and cut it into strips. So that's what I'll do now. Like I said, kidding takes a while, so I'm not going to worry about how long this video is going to be. Because if you like watching them, you'll watch it. If you don't, then you won't. That's the beauty of YouTube, because you get to choose who you watch and which videos of that they do that you want to watch. Yeah, so as you can see, I I just cut them in half into strips. Um, I use what I need and then the rest I will store in one of these little baggies so that they're ready for the next one. Let's use up the singles before I use up the doubles. So 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Okay, 24? No, 25. 25 is the number of colors that we're working with. Alright, so I'm just I'm gathering up the the other strips and I'm just gonna um, say it like I can do it easily. Yeah, there we go put them in here you know the top doesn't close but um, this goes into another bag so it works for me all right let's get those across out of the way put number six up all right so number six looks it'll fit it'll fit in we go Yeah, I am I am looking forward to doing this project. I know I said it when I unboxed it. Um, it'll be my first all crystal. And so I am curious as to how it's going to turn out. I have gotten the other one that I ordered. Um, so maybe tomorrow night or the next night whenever I f feel like it I will do the unboxing of that one now I am um, I am waiting I'm trying to be patient um, I am waiting for several orders I know, you know, the world situation, it's, at, it is what it is, and things are just taking longer, so I am being patient, well, I'm, I'm impatient while I'm patient, let's put it that way, I'm anxious, but I'm being patient, that's the more accurate terminology, um, so I'm waiting on these orders. Um, I have two orders from Everyday E-Deals that I'm waiting on. And I have probably about six or seven orders from various entities on AliExpress. Um, I'm also waiting for an order from I forget the name of the website. Um, it's a U.S. based site. Um, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do a little video 
Well, you, you know what? Never mind. You guys will see it. You'll see it when when they arrive. So I have one company that's stateside I'm waiting on. I actually have a, a Diamond Art Club one that showed up last week. I don't I don't feel I need to unbox those right away because their level of quality is pretty 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 good. Um, but anything that comes China mail, I open it as soon as I get it. Stateside, um, I might give it a few days. And, you know, I don't have, I mean, granted, once I get my um, everyday e-deals orders in, those are going to be some pretty sizable. So, whether or not I do them in a long marathon video or I break it up into smaller chunks, I don't know. You know, it's whatever I feel like when the time comes. Um, so, of course, the everyday e-deals uh, are a bunch of, you know, snack-sized patterns. Although there's a couple multi-panel ones that they have that I'm tempted to order. But I really, I would like to get my first two orders from them before I place any more orders from them. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen videos where people unbox from them and everything seems good. So I'm not worried about how they're, you know, the quality of them. But I don't know. I don't know. I just, I feel like I want, I want my first two orders before I place any more. I might, I don't know, as, as the days drag on and I don't have them yet, who knows, I might break down and place my third order. Although there is, there is a paint by numbers kit that they have that I am really, really wanting, I want to just order it. I want to just order it. I'm afraid if I don't just order it, even though I might not work on it for quite a while, because I'm interested in paint by number, but I'm not ready to get started yet, because I've already got so many crafts going. I don't know. But I do think I'm going to order it, because it is just, it's it's so, so me. It is just a beautiful, beautiful picture. It is it seems so well done because they do show you, you get a real good sense of how the painting is going to look when it's done. But it's big. I want to do a couple smaller ones to get my, get my technique in. I've been watching some YouTube videos on the you know tips and tricks and supplies and stuff so I'm gonna slowly gather all the supplies um, that everybody you know the people I've been watching highly recommend and work on one or two small ones to get my technique down before I work on that big one that I really 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 it's it's a scene of a Venice canal, you know, so it's a canal. It shows all of the houses on, you know, the facades of the houses and their windows and their balconies and uh, all the walkways and the little bridge and it shows some gondolas and it's just, it's the rendition of it is just 
beautiful. So that's that's one. That's the one that caught my eye and has got has gotten me interested in paint by numbers. Want to get? Oh, at least want to give it a try. You know, I figure it's another craft. I might, I might really enjoy it. I might, mm, eh, so not quite so much. And I'll work with it just long enough to get that one, you know, Venice painting done. Um, but we'll see. Don't know until I, until I get my little hands into it. I feel like I'm really gonna enjoy it because I do love all sorts of crafty stuff. I do need to live a long, long damn time. Now this is one symbol that kind of worries me a bit. Because it's, it's an O or a zero. To me it's an O because it doesn't have a line through it because as you can see, my zeros all have a line through. That's something I learned to do early on in my um, Air Force career. Um, but as you can see, these two symbols are both blue. One's a U and one's an O. <laughs> Who knows? This The canvas looks pretty darn clear, so I have I have some hope that it's not going to cause any problems for me, and I do have I do have a, a light pad to put it up on, and that will that will help even more. I keep okay. So the chair in here is a stool. It rotates. Ding. See rotation, um, and it. It works well for this space, but it's not very comfortable. And I keep wanting to cross my legs, but there's not there's not enough room under the desk to cross my legs. But we're just gonna keep keep moving along. All right, so number ten is pretty purple, and it's a small amount. So. Oh. Yep, this is why you always put a tray underneath the pour. Because, come on, there's one more that just doesn't, there we go. Because there's always going to be one that likes to... Go for a, go for a ride. Alright, so there we go. And let's see if I can move just a little bit faster. I mean, while, while I'm talking, is you know, I can do more than one thing at a time, but sometimes I do need to just focus a little bit of my attention on what I'm doing as opposed to what I'm saying. I think we can manage. All right, so what rabbit trail did I get diverted from? Okay, so yes, orders, um, diamond paint, you know, paint by numbers. That was that. Okay, so this is number 11. Yeah, that is a big bag. So yep, we are definitely going to only be able to put so much in into this. But, you know, at any point in my life, I would never have thought that I would be working with this many crystals. Uh, rhinestones. It's 
weird to think that you know most projects you may put a couple dozen rhinestones on something especially when you were doing card making it's a rhinestone here rhinestone there you know but not hundreds and thousands of rhinestones but that I, that's gonna be so pretty but like I said I I'm curious to see how this media translates these pictures I, I'm sure there's some they're they're just gonna make more sense for some pictures and not so much for others I'm trying to pick ones that I think are gonna work well with this media and um, there's one that I really have my heart set on that has been out of stock so I'm just I check every few days to see if if it's gonna come back in stock when it does I will order it I have one project that's all crystals that I haven't done yet but it's, it's different it's special stuff and it's Hello Kitty <laughs> uh, I, that's that's one of those ones that I I, I had misplaced the canvas um, it's you know it was one of those things that you go looking for it you can't find it and then one day you're moving something and you find it so and now I know where it is and I might take that one to work um, I'm almost done with the first of the four pack of mandalas 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 man delas I'm still trying to teach myself how to say it different than what I have said it my entire life <laughs> um, so the four pack of mandalas I really I, I do need to maybe look into that again um, the only reason I think I've been saying it wrong is because someone in a video said that it was pronounced you know the other way and I I should probably verify that before I learn I get too attached or too used to saying it the other way all right so number 12 is done all right I think it works good if I do do the number on the bottom first and then I do all right so we're making progress looks like we're about halfway that little symbol. I like to see. Okay, that's why I like doing the symbols with the color background. Because some sometimes they just okay. Let's see if I can see it on the canvas better. So number 13. Okay, number 13 is actually let's let's I don't want to do it with the thick one. Maybe, maybe I can. I have I have thinner. Um, I can do it with this, even though this is a friction pen. I'm gonna darken up because it is a triangle. In this configuration so I think that will be helpful for, for me to be able to see that better because really that was not showing that's the problem okay so manufacturers if you're lit if you're watching this you're listening to me please 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 do an inventory sheet print out the key 
because making a copy off of the canvas is a pain in our butt. First of all, getting the canvas situated on the copy copier without completely mangling the canvas is a chore. And then the canvas is always textured, so a lot of these symbols come out pretty fuzzy. But you know, we make do with what we what we have. But please consider if you are your manufacturer or if you're an ambassador for any of these manufacturers, you have their ear. Please relay to them this because that would be so awesome if all of the diamond paintings came with inventory sheets with the, the key printed instead of me having to copy copy it. Alright, so number 13 is ready to pour. Am I still in frame? Yep, I'm still in frame. I think I mentioned it before, I used to have a, a painter's tape on my desk that was just a hair beyond the frame so that I was I, I didn't have to look up to make sure that I was in camera but that's been removed oh, quite a long time ago because I hadn't been filming like this for so long and it was getting kind of ratty and it would get stuck on stuff so I just um, removed it. I might, I don't know, maybe I'll put it back. Since I, I'm, I'm doing these types of videos where having the, you know, desktop view. Okay, this is the first one that it feels like this is a little suspect. Um, but it's still, it's, okay, upside down, shake it, that lid does not open, um, and this box has a lid, so I'm not terribly worried about it. Um, so. Okay, moving on, number 14. So, yep, I've got, like I said, several orders I'm waiting on. The one thing that kind of irks me with everyday e-deals is they give you a tracking number, but the tracking number doesn't actually do anything. I go to the website that they, you know, they link you to for tracking, and you put the tracking number in and it tells you that that tracking number doesn't exist. And that's kind of irking me. Number 14. I like to be able to track my stuff. It just helps me with my you know, anxiety. And also, if I know something's coming, I know when to expect it. I know that I'm going to have a package delivered, you know, on a certain day. I've had packages stolen off my porch. So, if I know it's coming, I know to look for it. And I can be I can be prepared. Um the one time that a package got was stolen off my porch. I didn't. The person who'd sent it, because it was a round robin, it's cross stitch round robin. They they didn't send me the tracking information. So I didn't know when it was coming. We that day we actually um, took a 
a day trip into Las Cruces. We were there all day and it was well into the dark hours by the time we got home. Didn't know to expect it. So I had no idea that the package had gotten delivered and someone had swiped it off my porch. Until like a week later and I started to get concerned that it hadn't shown up and I asked the person for the tracking information and they sent it to me and as it turns out they sh it showed that it had been delivered to my door. So I just like to know when stuff is due to show up so I can be prepared. Because if I knew something was getting delivered, I may not have gone, you know, gone with them to Las Cruces that day. Or at least, you know, ask a next door neighbor to come and pick up whatever packages had gotten delivered. Okay, so number 15. Ooh, this one might fit. Might fit, might not. Yep, it's going to fit. Just get those last little stragglers. There we go. Hey, as you can tell, I don't talk a lot normally. Uh, because my voice is starting to get hoarse. It's not used to doing the chatty stuff. But... Might have to get used to it if I do these kit up videos because kitting up just takes time. Um, so maybe I, w I might find some um, tags to do. That's kind of the fun thing is in the floss tube community, we have quite a few tags, and for a while there, there was a a whole bunch coming out. Um, I have not seen any diamond painting tags. That's kind of odd. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe I have to do. I just have to search on them. Or if you guys want to tell me, have you seen any? Maybe I will tweak some of the cross stitch tags and make them particular for diamond painting. That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? So I um, might find some tags to do in these kinds of videos. So, it, you know, it's a little bit more entertaining for you. Because um, there's only so much chit chat. I could do. Um, it's one thing that I'm very aware of myself. Okay, so I'm not doing too bad just sitting here talking to you guys, talking to the camera. Um, but when I'm in a I'm in a group of people, I don't I don't talk a lot. Just something something about just I don't. Um, so I don't get a whole lot of practice, I guess, with chit-chat. There are some people that I know, um, floss tubers that I've, um, I've met and spent time with. I watch their videos, and they're just, chit-chat's second nature to them. They're, it's, it's a talent that they have. So good at it, where I am. I'm not, and I've I've learned to accept it. Um, so number seventeen. So I think maybe prep some tags to do some questions to answer um, during these these types of videos. And I hope my vo my voice is okay. I think I'm talking a little bit softer 
than I normally do. Um, maybe just because it's the, the the overall feel of the video. I'm not actually teaching anything. I'm not sh um, actually showing anything. So I, I don't know. My voice might be a little softer. If I find that in the video it is, I will um, see if I can't up the volume a little bit in the editing process. Um, I don't like to do it unless I have to. Um, but we'll see when I I won't I won't get to editing this video tonight because it it feels like it's getting pretty darn late already and it is a it's a work night. So I gotta get up early tomorrow. So maybe maybe I'll drag my camera in to work with me so I can offload or transfer the files to my laptop there and work on the editing. We'll see. If I feel like it, I will. Otherwise, I'll do it when I get home. Most, not all the time. There are some days where we're actually busy at work. Um, but most days, it's pretty quiet. Um, so, I, I try to take stuff with me to do in case things are slow. Um, so I always, I always have some diamond paint, a small diamond painting project at work to work on, but you know, you can only, you can only do so much of that, um, in one go. Um, so I also usually bring in some cross stitch and then anything else that I have going on like when I was doing the divider cards for the spare diamond uh, spare drill storage project I had cut them at home but I took them to work to label them all with all of the DMC numbers. So I always make sure I've got something with me in case it's a slow day. But something I can always set down, you know, at a moment, you know, so if the phone rings or someone knocks on the door, needing something, I can jump up and take care of it. So, for those of you who may not know me from Floss Tube, um, if you're just watch, if you're just a diamond painter and you're just watching my diamond painting videos, um, I am. There you go. One. One drill went. Went for the distance. There we go. I am IT support for a unit that does the maintenance on the F-16s that are used for training purposes. So I am constantly reminded <laughs> that one of these things ain't like the others. So, an, I, an IT person amongst a bunch of main, maintenance folks is, is a little bit weird. But then again, I am married to a maintainer, so I do have, I do have some have some experience already working with maintainers. Um, but yeah. So as long as my the 
computers are working the way they should and nobody locked uh, got locked out or their email is not is working fine you know and all of the computers that they use for their technical data they're all working the way they should we pretty much our office stays pretty quiet um, so we uh, we're paid to be there for when they need us. Let's put it that way. And I think that's true of a lot of IT. Um, you know, people that work in the IT field. Is when stuff's working, there's not much for us to do. I mean, granted, there are times when I have a project that I have to do, like when I have to do inventory of all of my computer devices that are spread across several buildings. You know, that takes that takes time. Um, when when we have a a new version of the Air Force's, you know, variant of Windows come out and it's one that they aren't pushing, can't push. So far they, they, they will always push to desktop computers. So far. There's been a cup, some, uh, you know, there's always a few computers that it doesn't work on and then you have to do the reload manually, um, but the desktops almost always get pushed their their um, OS updates. Um, but the computers, the the laptops that are used for the technical data, it's hit or miss whether or not they're going to push to them. So if, in that case, if they don't push to them, we have to do them manually, which is a, it's a, it keeps us busy for a couple of weeks. It's good because then we actually get to, we pull all of the devices in to our office in, you know, batches of, you know, five to ten, and we do the reloads on them. It gives us the opportunity to see the devices you know see if there if we if we see one that has um, something broken on it we can take care of that because sometimes we they they let us know when they break one most of the time but occasionally there'll be one that no one no one bothered to tell us about so that's good we get to put place our hands on each one of them and see how they're faring because maintainers are rough they are rough on the equipment so so in those, in those cases when we're having to reload I currently I have 228 devices that are meant for technical data display for the aircraft. Um, so when it comes time to do that, it's you know it takes it takes a couple of weeks to cycle through all of the all of the devices. But it's good, you know, in those cases it's enjoyable, you know, work to do. When it needs to be done, we get it done. Okay, so there's that one. We have three more bags, so we're almost, almost done. Yay. Okay, so now you know what I what I do. 
for my work. I am a retired Air Force veteran. I did 22 years active duty and now I am working as a contractor. Doing much the same job that I did before. So, I when I retired from the military, I I spent 3 4 years, I think. It was roughly between 3 and 4 years as a stay-at-home mom because my son at the time was the perfect age where he would really appreciate and benefit from having me at home all the time. But then, you know, after those three, four years, he started getting older. He's currently 13, so it's not so vital. I mean, it's, I started to get antsy having been part of the workforce most of my adult life. It just kind of got to me after a little bit. And we have our my mother-in-law living with us. So she she more or less took over all of the household stuff. So basically the care and feeding, you know, the clothes, washing the clothes and washing the dishes and feeding, you making the meals. She's taken over completely. So I was not exactly needed at home anymore. So when the opportunity to go back to work came about, I I jumped at it. And I'm I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty I'm I I, I love I really like most of the people I work with. And uh you know because we're an oddity in the unit, they tend to leave us alone. You know, unless they have a problem that they need us to look at. Um, but for a lot of the other, you know, reindeer games kind of stuff, they leave us alone. So, so I'm ha I'm happy with with the job. It it pays really well. I mean, it's it's not as much as um, you would think someone with an, a com security plus would get, but for this area, it's it's a good good price. So, and given given how much work we actually do, you know, how much, how many of our hours are really, really slow. I don't feel so bad. I'm, I'm actually, I'm there, you know, so I'm at the ready. But if nothing's going on, and I'm doing just my own, my own stuff, my, you know, crafting. I don't feel so bad. And that I'm not getting paid as much as you'd think. Okay, so. Well, I'm almost done. One more. So just to kind of, just for one more last little chatty thing. I've been saving up um, for a, uh, to, to get a new vehicle. I've been driving a RAV4, a 1999 RAV4, since I bought it in 1999. So, you know, it's still a good vehicle. It gets me to and fro, but on the long trips, it's not fun to drive because it doesn't like to go up the hills very well. It's a four-cylinder. Um, I've decided that I'm, I'm going to upgrade. 
and I have been saving up because being a contractor you can never be guaranteed that you're going to still have a job when the contract ends. The contracts usually renew but they don't always you know so I did not want to be stuck with a car payment if we didn't have the job anymore so I saved up until I had roughly three quarters of the purchase price of the vehicle that I want and I finally made it there so I have my new vehicle on order it should take a few weeks to get to to get here so that I can take possession of it but it's on order it's on its way okay so here it is my angel eyes is full is kitted now so I can start this tomorrow if I want to so I hope if you if you watch this you enjoyed it if you have any constructive criticism or just advice on what I might do better let me know and let's see get my stuff packed up I'm trying to figure out a good a good um, you know way to say goodbye to you guys because I've always struggled with it so let's let's see what I can what I can do um, and my voice is starting to give out so <laughs> I gotta end this now so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this you guys take care happy crafting be kind and be safe and find joy in everything you do.